lovely place. Oh, yes. All run seal and sheepskins. Pots of honey. There's no acrylic in his carpets. So he says, make yourself comfortable. So I sat back in this chair. Ever so modern it was. Must have cost a fortune. You just lie right back in it and it brings your legs right up in the air. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. And the first thing he did was take his trousers off. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I told him. Funny sort of dentist you are, I say. <laughs> Mind you, I should have known. The second he said his name was Kevin, I should have known. They're all the same, them Kevins. Only after one thing. I've never known a Kevin who wasn't. Mm. Anyway, I've got to go back on Thursday. Yeah. He's going to cap my left by cuspid and then he's taking me to see cats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pots. He's got a wide red paws. <laughs> oh, yeah. Quadraphonic with a graphic equaliser. Anyway, Doreen, I've got to go now. We're ever so busy. Bye. <laughs> All the brochures are over there. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning. Morning. Um, I was thinking of having a holiday. All the brochures are over there. Yes. Um, I, I was wondering if you could help me choose. You see, I've never had this sort of holiday before. Well, I, I haven't had a, a real holiday for years. Oh. <laughs> Now, normally I use the time to, to catch up on things, you know, accounts, decorating, doing the Christmas washing up. <laughs> yes, but um, now that I read that the economy's on the up and up, you know, and I've been given my notice of redundancy, I thought, now's the time to take my girlfriend on a proper holiday. All the brochures are over there. <laughs> yes, I don't really want a brochure, you see. I want some advice on where to go. Oh. Where would you recommend? Well, it depends. On what? On where you want to go. <laughs> well, you see, I don't really know where I want to go. Well, you can go anywhere you want. Yes. Y you see, I, I was rather hoping for a bit of help uh, and advice. All, All the, the brochures, brochures are over there. <laughs> I don't seem to be getting through here. Perhaps the first thing I should have done was take my trousers off. Mr. Hargreaves! Please, don't be alarmed, really. I've only got a P-registered marina. <laughs> I know. I think I'll take some brochures. Help yourself. Thank you so much. I'll just do your card. What's your name? Uh, Roth, R-O-A-T-H. First name? Kevin. <laughs> down here? Asking for my job back. Seemed an appropriate position. What, bootlicking level? Quite. <laughs> Dear Mr Carter, I wish to offer you my most sincere apologies. I cannot tell you how appalled I am at my own behaviour. I have been childish, thoughtless, stupid, insensitive, irresponsible, <laughs> reckless, rude and despicable. <laughs> And I cannot begin to apologise enough. <laughs> You're sort of just easing into it gently. Yes. And all you did was resign. Well, I'm afraid I took the opportunity of settling a few old scores. I did write a bit of a resignation letter. Oh, Liz. Well. I must also apologise to your secretary, Miss Edwards. I suggested she had an unnatural relationship with her Swiss cheese plant. <laughs> well, she talks to it, Philip. Well, people do. It's, it's supposed to be good for houseplants. But she whispers to it. Sweet nothings. Every time I come near her end of the open plan, I feel like a gooseberry. <laughs> I also regret my childish corruption of your name, Carter. <laughs> I spelt it with an F. <laughs> Did. I'm afraid I did. Oh, well, well, you, you, you were quite right. Was I? Yes, that is childish. 
This scattergun letter of yours, was anybody else in the firing line? Well, Brian. What's wrong with Brian? Well, he's a nice chap, you know, I mean, a nice chap. Yes. But he's got broad lapels. Oh, my God. <laughs> well... Well, I mean, I'm surprised he hasn't been locked up, you know. I mean, if he's got broad lapels, good <laughs> heavens. Philip, I just don't believe this. All you had to do was resign. You know, dear sir, I'm afraid I have to leave your employ on the 31st inst. I hope you are well. Regards to your charming wife, yours sincerely. But not you. Oh, no. Now, someone there with a, a perfectly ordinary name, someone who likes to water a houseplant every now and again, and now, God save us, the very devil incarnate, a man with broad lapel. Oh, shut up. So now you've got to sit down and apologise to everyone in that office, including the wretched Swiss cheese plant. Oh, shut up. This is an advertising agency. Brian receives important and expensive clients. He's got a, a kipper tie, John Lennon glasses, and a packet of big Rizzlers for rolling his joints in a coffee break. <laughs> he calls everybody man, including women, and Carter has cautioned him twice for growing cannabis in the firm's window box. <laughs> I mean, people thought they'd wandered into a time warp. That is what broad lapels means. Well, I still don't see why... I don't why care what you still down. don't see. What you still don't see strikes me as a remarkably boring topic of conversation. I know I shouldn't have written that letter, but I did. I'm now trying to put it right, and I could use a little help. What's all this? Another approach. Dear Blamange face. <laughs> I wasn't going to send it. I was doodling. Anyway, I don't have to apologise to Brian. Why not? He has been locked up. He was busted by the drug squad. <laughs> Where's the British disease? <laughs> uh, I think he's, um... Well, let me see. He's either Never in the... Never mind. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. I've come in here to lick a few wounds in my time. Yes. Mm. None like this. Oh? Early retirement, Ruth. Oh, I see. How varied are the ways in which we glimpse our own mortality. What? I was reminded of that time all those years ago when my barber held his mirror over my head and I first saw gleaming faintly through the thinning crown, my incipient bald patch. <laughs> what a dreadful shock that was. Would you like something on it, sir, he said. Yes, please, I said, some hair. <laughs> then when I was invited to go in number 10 for Crichton Corinthians and discovered that my cricket flannels had been made for a much smaller man. <laughs> my son, using my razor, by becoming a grandfather, taking my national service uniform to the war on want shop. <laughs> <sighs> I've just come from head office. Oh. The carpet's very thick in head office. Soft on the knees when you're begging for your job. <laughs> Gaskell, I had to see. You know how old Gaskell is? No. 35. That's the age to be 35. Too old for acne, too young for liver spots. <laughs> they shall inherit the earth, the 35-year-olds. What a loathsome lot they are. With their STP membership, their marathon training programs, their Porsche 924s, mineral water colored socks and breath freshness. <laughs> Lords of the earth. I wondered what words he would find to salve his guilty conscience and rescue my dignity. Optimum parameters, he said, have been drawn regarding existing experience to career potential ratio. <laughs> and from a seniority precondition, I was superior to the maximum qualification. Well, all that sounded pretty damn good to me. <laughs> I reckon I was home and dry. What all that means is that I'm too old. Oh. <laughs> Little bastard. 
I'd like to give him a good kick in his optimum parameters. <laughs> I mean, I'm still in the prime of life. I still have my health, my energy, my virility. Well, I think I have. Alice makes few demands on it these days. <laughs> Alice has her own optimum parameters, it seems. <laughs> oh, well, there it is. Yes. What will you do, Ruth, when it's all closed down? Well, my husband wants us to move to be near my sister in Wellin Garden City. Start a little business. But I've been offered a transfer to Milton Keynes. You mean to tell me you have to choose between Milton Keynes and Welling Garden City? <laughs> yes. And here's me moaning on about my little troubles. <laughs> um, excuse me. Yes, Napoli, can we help you? A uh, head officer on the phone, something about your pension. <laughs> How sweet of them. <clears throat> And how kind of you, Napoli, to come along and find out where the old chap has wandered off to. <laughs> Give me your arm, would you? <laughs> Tell me, Napoli, how old are you? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. <clears throat> what car do you drive? A Datsun Cherry. <laughs> There's one here that's thrill-packed. There's one here that's fun-filled. Usually party-type atmosphere almost every night. God. <laughs> Don't they sound dreadful? Grim. Listen, hotel activities include ten-pin bowling, sangria barbecues, all-night discos, competition darts and pedalos. My God, are they compulsory? <laughs> well, the people in the pictures look quite happy. Don't they just? Everyone smiling vacuously in the sunshine. Ah, that's more like it. What is? Someone who isn't smiling. <laughs> well, he wouldn't. He's the local Spanish waiter. <laughs> that's another aspect of this holiday thing. What is? Exploitation of the locals. Now, now look at him. Now, he was a fisherman once. Or, or, or a farmer, or a bandit, I don't know, but whatever it was, he and his forefathers must have been doing it for centuries. Now look at him. Got up like a yellow penguin. <laughs> God, those trousers must hurt. <laughs> there he goes, mincing along the side of some swimming pool, serving pints of poisonous lager to some red-nosed wally who calls him Manuel. <laughs> And he's determined to have a bloody great time in Spain, even if it is chock full of dagos. <laughs> I bet he wishes he was still a farmer. Are you sure you want to go? Well, I'll sleep on it. What's this? It's a carbon copy of my letter to Carter. What do you think? Um... It was very good. Um... Good? Have you actually sent this? Yes, recorded delivery. And it is an exact copy. It's a carbon copy, Philip. It doesn't matter. You spelt Carter with an F again. Plant. It's not. It's a present from Gerald. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm hopeless with plants. They always die on me. He's coming in on Friday, too. Do you suppose that's enough? Well, seems nice and soggy. Mm. Anyway, uh, where were we? Uh, my holiday. Mm? Oh, oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Well, it's, uh, it's just a thing. Yes, I, I, I thought that... No, 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 it'll do you the world of good. The world of good. Just get away from it all, have a bit of fun. Oh, yes, holidays. Yes, mm. I, I, I thought... Very that, that... wise decision, holidays. Mm. 
Did I ever tell you about that disaster Gerald and I had in Minorca? No. God, I nearly died. I nearly died. Two weeks of sheer, unadulterated hell. Oh, dear. It started on the plane. Granada Airways. <laughs> Gerald sat in the wrong seat and the stewardesses started panicking. One hostess actually screamed. I mean, can you imagine it? An air hostess with an anxiety complex. <laughs> oh, Granada Airways. Oh. Anyway, from then on, everything just went downhill. I mean, oh, the hotel. Not good. Good? You wouldn't believe the ants and the cockroaches. <laughs> good. And the cats. Cats? Three o'clock in the morning, I wake up to find ten mangy kittens placidly gnawing away at the flesh of my toes and <laughs> licking the open wounds. Have you any idea how long the incubation period is for rabies? No. <laughs> Two years. For two solid years, I was terrified to have a glass of water in case I found I was afraid of it. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't go. I... No, 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 you go. I'm sure it'll do you the world of good. No, oh, I'm sure. Anyway, what's the option? Stay here and have a breakdown worrying about your redundancy? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sure that bloody plant is wilting. <laughs> People talk to them, you know. Lunatics. <laughs> yes, so I gather. Oh, come on, you little son. <laughs> ah, there is a label. Ah, what, what, what does it say? Uh, water sparingly. <laughs> I thought I'd just go, just lie on a beach and soak up the sun. Wonderful. Get myself a real tan, you know? I mean, for a few weeks, I could look the way Edward Heath always looks. Orange. <laughs> yes. Good. Careful you don't get a melanoma. A what? A melanoma. A cancerous mole. You've got moles, haven't you? Yes, a couple. The sun can stimulate them. They get bigger and set up growths throughout the body. My God. You die very quickly. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very comforting. Ruth, have we got any... Oh. Hello, Ruth. Lovely. Oh, you remember me then? So long since you've been in, I'm surprised I haven't faded into the mists of time. What did you want? I've got a problem with Dylan. He's locked himself in the loo. Oh, my God, he's not... He is. I had to bring him in. It's half-term, you see, and Deborah's got a migraine. She gets them, you know, they just strike right out of the blue every half-term. <laughs> I should have arranged to leave him somewhere, like a police station <laughs> or a padded cell. But I thought as we're closing down and there's not much to do, it'd be OK. So I just stuck him in a corner with his books, torture in the Middle Ages and drill a killer. <laughs> and when I turned around, he'd gone gnawed through his steak. Why has he locked himself in the loo? Well, I thumped him one. I know I shouldn't have done. His child psychiatrist says he need, needs approval for everything he does. What I should have done is tell him what a perfectly delightful little chap he is while beating him black and blue. <laughs> anyway, the little brat bit me on the finger and then locked himself in. In the ladies, I might add, little pervert. You want me to get him out? Good Lord, no, leave him there. And what I wondered is, have we got any TCP? I'm sure it'll go septic. <laughs> Claims analysis. Oh, yes. Uh, right, no, uh, leave it with me. I'll, uh, I'll tell uh, someone, yes. Thank you. That was front office security. What did they want? Apparently, someone is throwing toilet rolls out of the ladies' loo window. <laughs> It seems the street outside looks like the north bank of Arsenal football. Right? <laughs> oh, God! I like Dylan. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I feel bloody. Oh, what's wrong? I got my job back. <laughs> oh. I have voluntarily surrendered my freedom. I have groveled my way back into servitude. Was Carter unpleasant? Oh, 
far worse. He was nice about it. Ah. <laughs> I've been a silly girly, but I'm not going to be a silly girly anymore, am I? <laughs> Patronising bastard. <laughs> he didn't actually pat me on the head, which is just as well. If he had, I'd have bitten his arm off at the elbow. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I hope that wasn't an heirloom. It was free with petrol. <laughs> you know, back in the 60s when petrol was cheap, before we discovered we had our own massive oil reserves and it became really expensive. <laughs> well, now I am friendly, working colleagues with Carter again. I am even bosom pals with Miss Edwards. Oh, yes. How's her plant? Oh, it's fine. I had to apologise to it this morning. <laughs> Have you ever been condescended to by a vegetable? Could we talk about the holiday just for a minute? Ah. Now, there's this one, Fantasy Club. I mean, it's a bit like Butlins with Garlic, but... Can't go. What? It's part of my deal with Carter. Three solid months on a new product that is so feminine and so intimate and so utterly utterly unnecessary that I refuse to think about it. Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt your reading. <laughs> Especially if you got to that moment where Darren's cruel lips are just about to press brutally down onto Jenny's trembling mouth. <laughs> the next thing he does is take his trousers off. Did you want something? Uh, yes, good afternoon. My name's Roth. I was in here the other day. Uh, you treated me to your personalised A1 special top grade advice and attention. You gave me a brochure. Yes? Yes, well, I was looking for a holiday for me and my girlfriend. Well, now, for reasons that Mills and Boone would not find very convincing, she can't come, so it's just me. And I'd like to go on that one. Oh, yes, Fantasy Club. I'd recommend them. Well, then why didn't you...? Never mind. <laughs> what do we do now? I suppose you want me to fill out a form. Uh, yes, please. Name? Uh, Roth, R-O-A-T-H. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Kevin. Date of birth? Uh, 7th of December, 1945. Oh, you're 37. That was quick. Yes. What's up? This holiday is for young people. Maximum age 36. You're too old. 